This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni and pizza. Production services by Sidekick Media Services. And listeners like you supporting us at patreon.com slash awesomecast. It is the Awesome Cast episode 700. Uh, we are here with you, and uh, we got a lot of fun stuff. Uh, we got a little bit of experiment going too, and I have a soundboard as soon as my iPad charges. Uh, anyways, there's no battery in there. Uh, and anyways, we do have with us from the ocean is the Dutters. <laughs> Literally just in the ocean. In the ocean. Just waiting in the ocean. That sound suppression is amazing if you're on the podcasting. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> oh, look, a jellyfish. Mm hmm. Dream. Wait. Dream. <laughs> yeah, dream. <laughs> that reverse. Dream until your dreams come true. There you go. Uh, the 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 recently televised. Wait, wait, is this is wait, is this is this your? You were literally here last night, and you're at the ocean. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't even know you were doing this. What is happening? <laughs> this is this. You're just like you're just like. Listen, I'm a TV star now. I was on afternoon daytime television in Pittsburgh. I just need to. <laughs> yep, I had to leave. I was too famous. You were. What is that show? Is it the Talk? The Pittsburgh Talk or something like that on KDKA. Talk Pittsburgh. Talk Pittsburgh. Thank you. My mom knows it. She DVR'd it. So did yours, apparently. <laughs> so uh, what were you talking about on there for those that didn't catch it? And then we, it's all over the Facebook. Actually, I'll share it with the group right now. <laughs> uh, so I am I work for 412 Thrive, which is a breast cancer support organization. And last night we had a karaoke night at um, Hard Rock. And mm -hmm. it was all show tunes. And everybody had a great time. We had I think it was like 50-some people there. Mm. Wow. I did not sing. That's um. What do, I think I think I was at a costume a karaoke a costume karaoke before um the Three Rivers mm -hmm. comic uh, uh comic book com comic con did um previously. It is an experience. So that was, did you have judging and everything like that there? I know I know you popped in a little later. No, no, just just <laughs> just doing for funsies, it. just for funsies. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, well, we'll get into it. Also, I think this is the first time you've been in studio for the this show, uh, right? Right. Right. Hey, Potter is here. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the couch. I'm on the comfy couch. On yes. the comfy couch. On the very comfy couch. Yes. Yes. Brought a cookie cake. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much, Betty, yeah. for uh, coming in and hanging with me here, and we're uh, celebrating. Ah, no, hold on. I got a fun little thing for us to do in the second half here. Uh, there's a, and Katie, there's a link in there. Let me know if it works for you. Um, I, I think you saw it before. So I'm, I'm curious. I don't know if you have to like pay for it to make it work. If not, I'll just be your um, guide on this thing. But let's get into our awesome uh, thing of the week. The thing I think we've mostly been doing for 700 episodes. I don't know if we had awesome things in the first episode. Well, we can ask something later if that's what it is. Anyways, who wants to go first on your awesome thing of the week? I see, Potter, you have something spacey. Yeah. I do have something spacey, and this is something uh, different. So SpaceX mm -hmm. is doing the first private spacewalk. Okay. Because all the other spacewalks up to now have either been NASA or the Russian, Soviet slash Russian space agency. So this is SpaceX on its own. Uh, they're handling it a little bit different. Okay. Um, first of all, they're going up. What, SpaceX doing something different? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, there's a couple things that make me a little bit nervous, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the highest space flight since the Apollo. So it's going 750 feet up. I'm, I'm sorry, 750 miles up. Okay. Uh, it's going to go so far up, it's actually getting out of the protective um, uh, magnetic field for radiation. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, they asked... NASA has a thing that says you can only go up so many times before you get a lifetime amount of radiation. Okay. And these astronauts, because it's a five-day mission, they're going to max out in this. They're going to say, you pay your lifetime max of radiation for health and safety reasons. You cannot be astronaut. Now, of course, who knows? They could go to Russia and do it or somewhere else. But mm. And the other thing is the way the... Other spacewalks have done by now. 
but before now, is you basically have, like we see in science fiction, you have your area where the air and the pressure is. The astronaut gets suited up, goes to a decompression thing in that little room area. All the pressure goes out. They go out. They do their spacewalk. They come back in, shut the outside door, repressurize that, and then come back in. That way, there's one astronaut who's always in a safe, sealed area. Mm-hmm. In fact, the first American astronaut who did a spacewalk had some issues, and there was talk of what happens if we have to cut them go and just kind of cut the cord and let them like you always off. Like you always see in the movies, right? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> they, had, they had that plan. Well, with SpaceX, they don't have that. They're just going to pop open the nose, depressurize everything, so all four astronauts will have to be suited up, mm-hmm. have their spacewalk, Come back in, repop the nose in. So there's no backup in the in the no. in the the thing. No, there's no backup. Wow. Yeah, that's that's the scary thing is that if something happens and they can't seal back up, mm-hmm. they're done. You lose all four people. <laughs> they're, much. They're, yeah. they're done. They're yeah. done. This is at great risk. I, I think that is that. So I mean, it's. It's interesting, you know, you have your move back fast and break things that's been happening with SpaceX, and that's fine when we're blowing up rockets themselves, but when we're talking about people involved, and of course the people know, like, the right, risks in right, this. Right. Like, like, this is not like, hey, we're signing up and everything's going to be just fine and, 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 and whatever. Like, they, they I, you know, there's, there's, there's got to be an understanding of some sort on this thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the thing is, the four people going up, two mm-hmm. people are SpaceX employees. Mm-hmm. In fact, they're two of the early SpaceX employees. Okay. Uh, one's a retired Air Force pilot, and then a billionaire who's who's funding the whole thing. Wait, wait. The billionaire is going to go <laughs> on a spacewalk and, yes. and risk this stuff? Yes. What is... Okay. Yeah. Does not sound like <laughs> anything at all that we heard maybe okay. last year that dealt with uh, people going in a submarine with the billionaire. No, re- no, it doesn't sound related <laughs> to that at all. No, it's, it's basically the same thing, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. Like if you got the, the money, space ocean, yeah, yeah. the sub- yeah, ocean. Yeah. Up in the, mm-hmm. I mean, it's basically the same problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the only thing is that I trust SpaceX better than the ocean people. Okay. Uh, okay. Just because, like they said, with the ocean thing that happened, I feel like they were running it off a like a, anybody a, an old can controller. Anybody can put something they made in the ocean. You're not going through something to put something in. Like you kind of have to go through NASA at this point, right? You can't just. I, I don't think SpaceX has their own like launch pad, if I'm not mistaken. No, they are launching from um, Kennedy Space Center, right? Typically, yeah, the same, and they're doing the same pad they use for all the the other crewed missions. Sure, which is the pad they use for the Apollo missions. Okay, so that's good, but this is 100 percent SpaceX still. So, and because the billionaire is funding it, it's not unlike other SpaceX missions, which are funded by taxpayer money. Mm-hmm. This is fun- independently funded, and everything's done outside of government funding. So this is the first time, you know, so there are, like I said, there's risk involved. Um, Not having extra backup is always a little, but if you've, suppose, you know, in my mind, if you tested it enough, whether it's a risk or maybe they're doing it to save a little extra money by removing one redundancy, I can't get in the engineer's head Mm -hmm. or the project approver's head. Yeah, you don't know the the risk. Exactly. But now the thing is, it is scheduled to launch tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was scheduled to launch a little bit earlier. They had a hydrogen leak. I think it was a, it was a leak of something. I think it was hydrogen. Uh, they fixed it, and so it's scheduled to launch tomorrow down from Florida. Okay. So it, it, it like I said, it's good. Stu- new stuff happening is exciting, mm-hmm. and more people getting involved. Like India is going to uh, launch soon, and they're going. It's going to be a test launch of their crewed vehicle, which they hope to have a crewed vehicle next year and the more I, I hear other countries are doing this like mm-hmm. the more i think like you know i you know i watched uh, um for all mankind or you know obviously it's like what if uh the soviets got there first and then what happens from there and then it means like everything gets moved forward like you need pressure you know mm-hmm. if nothing else is like we need to get there so they don't take it over you know like all the all the resources whatever it is you know um tell somebody they're going to put a space laser on the moon they're probably going to want to fund nasa uh, for instance um so yeah 
you know, whether reasonable or not, you know, that's that. I mean, that, that's it. I mean, it, it's all it's all kind of pressure. But, um, you know, unfortunately, privatization, when they see an opportunity, that's the thing that's going to push it for better or for worse. And then we've all seen Alien. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we've seen that movie. And and but uh, but that's the only way it's going to move forward, I think so. I don't know. I don't know, Katie. What do you? How do you feel about the spacewalk? <laughs> in terms of by your reactions. <laughs> but it's like this sounds familiar. I've seen this movie. I want to. Well, I've maybe, seen this movie. Maybe we'll send a bunch of oil drillers up. We got some reaction from uh, 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 trashing Armageddon last week. By the way, <laughs> you have some comments to respond to, Katie. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> yes, Where yes. At? Over on the TikTok. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh anyways awesome cast on tiktok please follow us for for the fun clips so you can comment on very specific parts of the show that we put out or see like five clips of me talking about duck duck go apparently because that's what we ended up with anyways uh we'll see what happens with this um man you know i it, it, spacex for better or worse is is, is doing good hell they're going to save astronauts apparently from the space when boeing has yeah uh, failed everybody so yeah yeah mm. um anyways well th- i'm not gonna comment on that uh, katie what's your awesome <laughs> thing of the week <laughs> oreos <laughs> <laughs> some more asmr <laughs> yeah this can be open oh it is um, that time of the year yep these are pumpkin spice not pumpkin spice like i keep calling everything pumpkin spice Oreos and um, yep, they look like Oreos. Inside is pumpkin-y goodness. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna be like everything Halloweeny that I find in fall. How I'm just gonna do that every week for awesome. Give me a month, a, a month of cu- pumpkin spice objects. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're really good. They okay. actually taste kind of like pumpkin pie. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. I was. I'm um, de- definitely like. I'm not a huge like. Oreo, I mean, they do a good job with most flavors, but they're, mm. you know, occasionally you'll get like this, but yeah, thumbs up on the pumpkin spice Oreos. If you like pumpkin spice, mm-hmm. uh, if you don't, I would not suggest them, but yes. pumpkin spice Oreos, big thumbs up. And thank you for the heads up that they were doing pumpkin spice at Starbucks. I thought where's was Dunkin'? And I was like, why can't I find it on my app? Um, it, it, did you see the notice on the Dunkin' app though? Missy was showing. Oh, I, didn't, I, didn't. I hadn't seen this, but Missy showed me this today. Because it sounds like Starbucks came out of nowhere with the pumpkin spice and surprised them. Did we have this conversation? Who did I have this? Con- I just had this conversation with somebody yesterday. I swear Missy it- was the one showing me. Or what did you show me last night? That might be. I don't know. <laughs> I might be. It's, it's been a long 24 hours. Oh, you, oh, you did. Because I came over and played Turtles. That's right. That's right. But Oh, yeah. Play with us on the internet. With turtles. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I, uh, tell them what the message was since you're the one that showed it to me. I, don't, I thought I was Missy this t- today, but. Oh, you're fine. Um, so I had gotten a pumpkin spice um, chai tea um, at um, Starbucks. And I told you to do it and you tried to order it, couldn't find it. So a couple of days later, you know, yesterday I got, in the, we got emails from Duncan and essentially it was like, um, Dun- pumpkin spice coming soon to Duncan, which is very unusual because years, you know, usually it's Starbucks, Duncan, one by one, like same time mm-hmm. doing, you know, re- within days. But um, I'm suspecting that uh, Starbucks scooped Duncan this year mm-hmm. on the pumpkin spice situation, and Dun- Duncan was not prepared because we did not. I did not hear any rumblings of um, like usually we hear things from Starbucks like, "Oh, the pumpkin spice is coming soon," and they tease it. And this year was nothing. So I think they scooped um, Duncan, and Duncan is said it will be in a- soon. Coming soon. Look out for it. Stay tuned. No problem. <laughs> there's a, there's a pun- you know how folks like, like you know, we've been in marketing for a while and you're like, there's your telltale signs. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I did read that this is the earliest they did pumpkin spice, whatever at Starbucks. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I think ever. I mean, it's August. I love the, but it hit when it felt like fall. At least in this region, right? It right. Like, like unlike unlike today, where it was yeah ninety, de- 90, 90 degrees. Fr- it was ninety three degrees on my <laughs> yeah. watch when I out went out yeah. there. I'm well air conditioned here in this studio, and I walked outside to go grab the the our sponsor pizza, and it, it hit me in the face so hard. It's just yeah, pretty pretty wild. 
Um, anyways, uh, so so uh, uh, first shots fired in the Great Pumpkin Spice War of 2024. Uh, I'm here for it. I've been actually I've been abstaining from the pumpkin spice because I realized that you could you could get the coffee pods all year round. I stopped it a few. I'm just like and appreciate the season. <laughs> I I get them when uh, I don't want the season to end, and then you know you got to come back around. Got to come back around. It has to be new again, right? So, anyways. So my awesome thing is something we've been using for a few weeks here, um, and it's not going to be not much going on because we don't get a lot of uh, random chatters here for this show. Uh, but for the wrestling shows, it's been a pretty amazing um, uh, 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 helper on this. So I was looking for something, and there's a few um, there's a few programs that are Windows only and things out there. But I was looking for something more browser based. I'm, I, I I like a good multi chat. You know, uh, Restream was really good for this, and I know we can't get everything because not everything like like Facebook chat doesn't play well. Last I knew with Restream stream when we were using it. It's been a little while since we used Restream itself. So what I found was um, this is actually um, something of a freebie um, that somebody put out there, apparently. I'm guessing this is a programmer or something like that. Uh, this is a multi-stream. If you go to streamchat.colinhorn.co.uk, <laughs> you will find just stream chat. Now, we use it uh, Twitch and YouTube for shows like this, obviously, but you actually have um, you have some, some, some drop-downs to do TikTok, uh, to do uh, Kick. Uh, that I know some people are using. It's another gaming kind of a Twitch competitor. Uh, apparently, you can stream to YouTube Shorts according to this, um, which I guess we send vertical video. We could do that, but we don't really do. Uh, you can turn things on and off as you go, and it's kind of nice depending on what it is. Uh, like the Twitch and the TikTok, you just drop in your username, and when you go live, it's going to pop in there. Uh, for YouTube, you have to like drop in the URL for the specific video that you're looking for. And then, um, you know, on Thursday nights and uh, last Friday night when we we're doing our shows uh, for from uh, 880 Wrestling, um, <laughs> the Mama Dutters drive by on the other feed it's just distracting me <laughs> with a margarita uh, with a margarita <laughs> <laughs> she just shushed me <laughs> uh i know i know i know what a vacation mama dutters is like uh so <laughs> but um but no it's really handy for for that so you know because i have commentators and, and they read the stream and i was like pulling them up in two tabs and side by side and all this mm -hmm. stuff but now that we're adding the tiktok and experimenting with that and finding ways to get this tiktok feed out as well now there's one place that they can look at and and the commentators are, and they're you know and and, and toddy tundera of the the you know the thrifty podcast that we've done stuff with in the past um is really good about looking at that and responding to them and responding mm -hmm. to their comments and bringing that into the commentary for the wrestling matches and the reactions and everything like that so that's been a really it's free uh, and again and there's other ones that i think they're pay and download and windows only and that's just a pain in the butt to be like oh do i have one that's set up for this do i have a pc um and it gets a little 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 iffy when it comes to those kinds of things. But this is this is really good. Again, stream streamchat.colinhorn.co.uk. You know, I, I can't remember if I did this before. I never went to the root domain domain to see what else they do. This has to be some kind of programmer or something, right? Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to do the scary thing and look at it here live on the air. No, it's just stream tools. Colin Horn apparently just makes stream tools. Hmm. Widgets and tools. Um, yeah, I've been using this for like three weeks or a month or something and this is the first time i've looked at it uh yeah looking for some handy streaming widgets or tools i have created things for every streamer to use uh styler for your stream elements or stream labs free and coming soon oh there you go oh so he's got a lot of stuff going on he's got a browser timer a chat dashboard is a chat styler okay there it, it does, yeah it doesn't even have oh i guess a chat chat uh the chat uh board is yeah that's what we're using actually so and yeah and you can you can kind of it does, you can't really tell with two of them but let's see if i turn all these on you can kind of see how you can kind of reformat this thing uh as you go too so you can go um you know make them columns or you can put them in a square if that's uh what fits for you so really really uh good Really good option there, and it's been very helpful for us on our uh, pro wrestling live streams here, um, in the uh, you know on, on Thursdays and Fridays. So awesome. Anyways, so I uh, want to give a shout out. You know, uh, geez, I don't know when we started Patreon. I, the, 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 was there a Patreon when we started? That's something I got to ask as well. Um, but uh, thank you to everybody that does support the show over there on Patreon. Uh, really, really helpful to, you know, it, it's helped motivate the show to keep going, to be quite honest, uh, because it's nice to know people actually care enough to be part of the Patreon. So thank you, everybody that does support us. On the Coffee Club level is Cynthia Klosky. At the Fan Show level, Michael Fedor, John 
Gundagore, and in here in the studio and supporting us, Dave Potter, spouse of Ruth Jewelry Affair at RuthJewelryAffair.com. Thank you so much, Dave, for supporting the show. Always. I can say personally to you directly. Yes. yes. Um, and, but, and I can say that I just looked up. Patreon started in May of 2013. 2013. So we were late to Patreon. I wonder what we were trying to do before then. I, I think I heard an Audible ad at the beginning of the show. We had like affiliate codes. We never made a dime off of it. But we sounded like every other podcast that was. Or maybe none of us were making money. I don't know. Maybe it was just the Twit Network that was making money off of it. Oh man, riding the wave. So I, uh, I I did something here, and uh, let me see if this is finished, and maybe I'll have to update this in a moment. So I, I you know, we talked a few weeks ago about uh, an app called Mac Whisperer, and let me see if that's done. Oh, it's still working away. But um, so the first five episodes are loaded. Of this, um, so I, I, I'm. This is this is now it's the AI era, right? Uh, so I'm taking the ChatGPT. I've taken Mac Whisper, which is an LRM that's going to transcribe everything, put it in a chat GPT, and now we can ask questions of it. Uh, but I have to plug my uh, computer in because it's about to die, or else this is going to be a really, really short segment. Um, and I'm trying to figure out which tab it's in. So um, in the meantime, I did... Uh, while I'm going to go to get this, Katie, do you have your phone handy for uh, messages? I do, but I wasn't able. I tried to click it in Slack. And that's fine. That's fine. Me. I took some choice quotes. If you wanted to look at these oh. real quick, <laughs> oh so I asked it definitely. Look at the second part where we have quotes about the iPad in 2010, and this is from our first three or four or five episodes. I might not have loaded four and five in by then. I love the iPad. I think that it has excellent potential for being a way to deliver the information to our readers it is still very early in the process i think i think newspaper man uh um uncle crappy was on the show it makes sense Ooh, oh i feel like we should play a game of guess the quote guess the quote <laughs> <laughs> we made it yeah because unfortunately like i said we don't have like who said things we just have the text of the conversation that we're plugging in there um Ooh, i have the next one who said this I've probably sold at least 10 iPads in the process because it's just that amazing. It's something that a lot of people talk about, but you really don't get it until you have it in your hands. See, I don't know if that was somebody that was working at Apple at the time or or just like talks to other people about it. Because I feel like that's something I'm wrong. betting it's Amanda. I, I don't think Amanda was on the show then. I don't think I don't Ooh, know. This is exciting. I think it's Rob <laughs> De La Creta because like he, <gasps> oh. he 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 very much was a he's he still is a a um advocate for technology, if you will, right? Um I mean Chilla says that too. It says I basically sold three of these things to people because I told them what it was about or handed it to him or something like that. Like that sounds like a Chilla thing if I knew that Chilla wasn't on the show yet. <laughs> so um Anyways, okay, I have power now. Uh, <laughs> what do you want to ask of the first five episodes of Awesome Cast? Do we have anything? Uh, apparently, we were talking about the Nintendo 3DS. So we were talking about the, uh, I think you see some quotes there of the Xbox Connect. Apparently, it was just announced. And we had a rumor that it was starting at $150. And we thought that was too much at the time. I cannot see $150 being worth it to me at this point. <laughs> It's a fantastic technology. I'd love to get my hands on it. <laughs> what do you want from uh, 2010 there, Dave? Oh. So it, mostly about those three items or do you just want to try? No, no, no just in general. <laughs> oh. Because uh, I, I just asked what were we excited about now that I updated this for the five episodes. The on live service. Do you remember on live? This was basically the precursor of what we know now as uh, NVIDIA GeForce and now and um, the mm. Xbox Cloud, all the cloud gaming. They're one of the first ones that did this, and they did not last. <laughs> so, because it turns out the internet wasn't ready for it. Um, and, but uh, yeah, so the, the, we, we talked about how uh, you could potentially stream to your iPad <laughs> that we were very excited about, right? It all comes together, right, Katie? I, and I shot. <laughs> you know what? I think I sort of remember that because I tried to use it to stream my Windows desktop to my iPad. Mm -hmm. 
before you could before the iPad. Yeah, because it was basically just a computer you logged into. Pretty much, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, I think they had a gaming side of the service and they had a business side of the service yeah. that was just remote desktop, which is which is things shadow PC and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you there's there's services you can do that. You, I think there's a Mac service you can log into too, or basically Amazon Web Services, <laughs> right? And I was just thinking because I was still teaching at University of Phoenix at the time, if I could just take that iPad versus a desktop but still have access to everything because not everything was mobile ready mm-hmm. Web- websites and everything. They still didn't work. Everything. There was so much flash stuff, Yeah, you know, and it didn't work on the iPad. So I'm sorry. You just couldn't go there. So yeah, it would be, Oh God. Um, I'm going to say some words here okay. and I'm just going to leave it on you guys for reactions. Okay. okay. Uh, iPhone four and iOS four were on, were coming up. This is probably June, July, and August of 2010. So we were probably in this kind of mode where you'll, we just had an Apple announce, announce the date for the next releases. Mm-hmm. Um, Hulu Plus was just announced. Mm. <laughs> there was no Plus. It was all ad-supported before then, I believe. Back in my day. Back was, in my yeah. day, yes. And anything mentioned about Android? Uh, uh, I don't see uh, Android as on the what we were excited about according okay. to this GPT. Uh, Google Me? It's probably one of the messaging services that they popped up and then <laughs> died <laughs> off because go, Google Google has an issue with think, messaging services. I think it's Google Plus. I think it was an early name for Google Plus I like because it sounds like it was um, not out yet or anything like that. Um... Yeah, we're, the quote is, I've been talking to a lot of people about this, and in the way I see it, I mean, we we need an alternative to social media, <laughs> okay? If they can knock it out of the park <laughs> and create something that meshes together all of your social networks, I think this could be a big player in the game of social media. Well, that didn't work out too well, did it? Windows mm. Windows 8 rumors. I'm really excited to see what they're going to do with Windows 8. They're building on a Windows application store, very similar to the way the iPhone has an app store. Well, there's still a store, but um, the rest of it, I mean, well, it, really, that was part of it. And I can't say the store is very good, necessarily, other than the Xbox side of things, um, because I feel like the apps in it are very, like, iffy. Yeah, they're, st- they're just as iffy as going up to the web and be like, what is this website I'm downloading from? You know, well, you look up DVD player, DVD, uh, um, DVD software, not DVD software, but yeah, yeah, this software and, and encoders and things like that. Mm-hmm. They're real sketchy looking. And I don't know what it is. And maybe that's the same stuff as like I'm downloading like Downey and, you know, a, a, a user or not a developer made independent things from, you know, from sites, you know, like like Mac Whisperer and stuff like that. I'm. I'm not worried about them for some reason, uh, but I am worried when I hit download in the actual Windows Store. But maybe that's just a perception thing on my side because I'm more on the Mac side. Yeah, and I, honestly, I don't get a chance to download from the Windows uh, Store because my Windows machine is a work laptop and they lock it down mm-hmm. where you need administrator access to pretty much install everything, which hey, makes perfect sense in a corporate situation. You don't want some... Someone going off downloading a little goofy program, all of a sudden you crash your business. We were talking about iOS iOS 4 potentially coming to MacBooks and the implications of an app-driven environment on the MacBook, <laughs> which I think we're just now getting to. Well, they, we, we probably didn't have an app store on the, on the Mac yet. No, that right? came, uh, I think that came later, yeah. Yeah, much later. And it's still, you can still if you will, sideload on the Mac. So it isn't as, I know the big fear was, are they going to lock it down as much as they locked down the iPhone? Mm-hmm. And they never really did. Google venturing into social media is a big thing on here. Google Plus and streaming services. The uh, evolution of podcasting <laughs> evolved from a niche, hobby, <laughs> a, niche, a niche hobby to more mainstream medium by then. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's Look, so funny even to think about podcasting went from like burr to like popular to, ugh, to yeah, yeah. back again <laughs> to to we 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 drew all the money out of this and uh everybody's mad because spotify ruined the podcasting industry 
So, <laughs> which is what happened because that's what I hear the complaints about is like, you know, Spotify uh, made everybody go to their app, which is not podcasting at this point. It's just an app that provides radio shows, you know, talk shows and things like that. You know, and and they paid all this money to Joe Rogan and all these other mm-hmm. guys and they were able to get in their advertisers in mass across those big names, get stats that no other podcaster with an RSS feed can possibly do. You know, like it, it just, it's, it's, it's against the technology of what it is in the democratization of it. There needs to be a, a and I don't know what this answer is because so many like, like Apple podcasts now are, Oh, I'm going on for a rant here, but Apple podcasts now and other services are like, kind of like, you know, Hey, the stats through us do subscriptions through us. Like they're becoming their own services within RSS feed is still there, but like to get like all the all the quote unquote good stuff as, as a bigger player, you gotta go through all those systems that are proprietary, um, or Patreon or something like that. You know, I, I what needs to happen is to, and, and I don't think this is gonna happen because I think every podcast also has a YouTube channel <laughs> too. Because I mean, who does a who who what what significant podcast um, has an audio only? version these days like i feel like it doesn't exist to a certain extent well it depends it depends on what you mean by significant because uh, it, I, honestly i listen to all my podcasts over through over um overcast, overcast which yeah. you can but how many of them have a video version well, right that's of- the thing i really don't in terms of and you gotta say a video version of the podcast versus mm-hmm. a video ver- like I listen to a the podcast mor- version of the video. <laughs> well, well, I like I listen to the morning street. Yes, they don't have a video podcast mm-hmm. because they don't put out on their podcast stream a video version. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, very sp- particularly. But they do have a they video. have a they have a video version, video stream. Yeah, you know, they, Twitch, they're, li- YouTube, they're live stream like that. or YouTube. Yeah. yeah, like 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 for instance, like I know, I'm like, oh, I want to start listening to my podcast for YouTube music. It just runs through YouTube. Right. And it's a, you go on YouTube. Like, I think the only, I'm aware of the only way you can get a a podcast into YouTube music is to have a YouTube channel with your show and label it as a playlist that's a podcast. And then it shows up over there. There's some, like, there's live streams that, you know, like our podcast, I'm redoing how we're doing, putting our podcast because, you know, this live stream that has the, the, the music in the beginning Mm -hmm. is all that I would put out on the YouTube stream. But now that I know that's what people click on when they're looking for a podcast in YouTube music, which mm-hmm. is a, not an insignificant number of people, I'm like, man, now I need to edit the show and cut that off and make the audio a little bit better because people are just listening to that video file as a podcast. So now yeah. I can't be like, well, this is a stream, so that's fine. If people don't want the video, it's fine. It's not perfect. It's not going to be in people's headphones as, mu- as much. It's going to be more on TVs and the phone and stuff. Now it's like no, that's the same thing. They changed the they changed the mechanism, and now I have to change my mechanism <laughs> to make it make sense. Yeah, you and, know. And so I, and I saw mm-hmm. I saw a news story saying that the new breakdown percentage of where people listen to podcasts thirty one percent YouTube, twenty mm-hmm. some percent is Spotify, and twelve percent is Apple. So Apple isn't even. <laughs> That's significant. I'm really curious because yeah. we just um, we just reboot a podcast feed, and 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 I had to I had to be like we have to do video versions. We have to do yeah. something video way you know placeholders because we're in that like hey some of these are audio only. Some of these are we we're starting to do video versions. Thankfully, a lot of the tools and services were already there. Things like ZenCaster are, are are tremendous now. If you're doing something like this, you know we do live, so I'm not going to use it. If we're post editing, use something like that. You know, I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, well, so even, even on YouTube, people just putting the audio up mm-hmm. with an image. Absolutely. And, and, and that's, that's what, what people are doing. Yep. That's what people are doing. Just, yep. just that uh, right there. Yeah. And, and you know, I, we have to, I think I need to have a discussion with one of our network partners cause they do simply an audio only version. And I don't think they're, they have a YouTube channel that they were putting clips, but I was like, I can't, I gotta put that. Yeah. Cause like, I literally can't listen to Roderick on the line is one that, that, you know, of, of all that I listen to, that's the only one where it's like, Oh, I got to go to Apple podcast cause they don't have a YouTube presence. Therefore, I cannot listen to it in the YouTube music app. Therefore, they are the outlier in how I listen to things, which means 
you know, what did you say? YouTube, YouTube's what? 30, 30 I some think percent? It's 31 percent. Is that like yeah. the highest percentage now? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's like, oh, well, you don't have your show on YouTube. You That's a problem. Right. You're cutting yourself off of the knees. That's that's a third of the audience mm -hmm. can't get to you anymore. So. But, but even if you add up YouTube, Spotify, mm. and Apple, mm -hmm. you're still talking under 70%. So, yeah. So yeah, there's 30% yeah, yeah. that, that are listening in other ways, like so segmented. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So little, little, little segment. But, but again, it used to be easy. I put out an RSS feed and it can go out to everything. That's not the case anymore. Yeah. Like, I can't say go get a go get a, 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 a podcast host and go. But then also some people are just going to put their stuff on YouTube. <laughs> You know, so now now we have to, you know, this is this is the Facebook is my web page for my business conversation again. Yep. You know, it's like, no, you need you don't need just it seems like you just need this, but you do also need this because of X, Y and Z. So, um, Katie, have you run in this conversation at all <laughs> in your business, in your business dealings with your clients? Oh, I just want to be the um, troublemaker and be like, well, what's a podcast? Like, what, what are we defining as a podcast? I don't know anymore. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> Would we, is talk radio podcast? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. It, you, and that used to be the conversation. And, you know, I, I, I started talking video podcasts with somebody. I was like, well, you know, I don't know if that's even a podcast. We're like, it's not. That's just what we call it. You know? <laughs> I, had to, I had to stop them halfway through the conversation. I'd be like, hey, listen, the terminology is all wrong, but we got to agree what we're, what we're talking about here. <laughs> so, well, especially since the device the podcast was named after yeah, yeah. no longer exists. No, no. Yes, exactly, and uh, oh. and the and the war the war for netcast failed. So, yes. <laughs> uh, by the way, I just double checked mm -hmm. on the iPhoneography podcast talking about podcast mm -hmm. uh, available where all five podcasts are available, mm -hmm. uh, and our YouTube channel. And under the podcast tab, uh, Greg, does, they they are all listed there. All 191 episodes are, are listed underneath the iPhoneography uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, and just recently we started to um, actually go live on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it feels like you have to now. Yeah. It really does. Even if it's not the cleanest version of your show. And it's you also know? the easiest way for us to do chat. Yeah. Because yeah. that way we don't work, you're not required to have someone cre create a Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, password mm -hmm. login and mm -hmm. so many people hate Facebook I mean and that's why we go to so many places because yeah. I want it to be yeah I want to go where people are where it's accessible to them you know you don't want to uh, uh, you don't want a barrier so it's just like you know it in and I, and I know most things require a login <laughs> YouTube twitch uh, Facebook uh, you know I suppose Twitter if you wanted to stream to that which we're starting to do in some other shows um and but it's it's such it's so fascinating and it's such an evolution and I'm kind of glad I don't do podcast anymore. Uh, <laughs> people keep saying, "Should we come and bring it back?" I'm like, "Yeah, not me." Uh, so, um, but uh, but no, it, it's been interesting to go from this is even the evolution. This has been really kind of uh, confounding me lately because uh, a lot of what I've wanted to do. I would say I take cues, cues off the Twit Network, who like built this big studio and everything. So that was kind of the dream was to have a studio. And now uh, Leo's in his attic, and they're all using Streamyard. It's like, and, and everybody's using Streamyard now. And then I, I, and and they're like bigger podcasts and with uh, uh you know, and all this. But also like somebody pitched using Streamyard for like a live show, like a live show with an audience. And I said this is a terrible idea, <laughs> especially if you're going to do like a pay per view kind of system. And I hear all the problems that are exactly why I'd rather have a physical studio, even just, you know, bringing people in over Zoom or something mm -hmm. like that. I would still rather do that than, you know, in a studio environment than everybody is God knows where. And we're just using a web based, you know, stream. Basically, it's like you're just streaming from Zoom at that point. Right. Um, mm, yeah. It's got some nice bells and whistles. But man, when it doesn't work and it's just nothing you can do. Um, that's been, that's a really maddening thing. And I'm watching like these professionals, like going through it. And I was like, man, this is, I mean, it's growing pains, I'm sure. But you know, for them converting, but it's, it's seen everybody move to that. It is a lot easier to that. And also I'm going to grave here real quick. You know how we do our podcasts. I think we do a very good quality podcast visually here. Okay. Some people just like throw up a webcam next to each other or four or five on a screen and that's the show. 
<laughs> and you see everybody picking their nose and then do camera shots like this and then <laughs> <laughs> and things like that and i'm just like who's who's doing this you know um it, that that i find i don't know i, I it, it that i don't get it i don't i don't get it i don't typically watch it um i will listen to it but um I, I don't know i don't know what that is and it's big shows are doing that too you know um just doing the just massive fox news ma- uh, talking head thing <laughs> you know for an entire hour you know is is especially when when you bring in a bunch of people that have varying things going on you know and and you know they're just like in their bedroom you know with a ter- terrible webcam it's just like hey, i don't know it's a throwback to 4 years ago when everyone even the big studio the big tv studios had to worry be, everyone had to work from home yep so they're on their webcam. This is the style now. This is what we're yeah. used to. You know, it's 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 hard to swallow for me. <laughs> it's worked so hard for so long on quality for visual and audio, and then to see like, oh, we just don't care anymore. You know, I just I don't know. It's 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 maddening. It's like, what am I doing? What am I doing here? Why am I working so hard? <laughs> so, um. Anyways, uh, anything else we want to ask this machine? Oh, yeah, I was, I was going to ask it if we were talking about artificial intelligence at all. Let's see if there's anything in there. Because um, that's definitely been a big change over the time. Um, we did not directly talk about artificial intelligence. It did not come up, at least in our first five episodes in tw- mid-2010. You know what? Try, try asking, did you use the term retina? Talking about displays? Yeah. I feel like we had a retina display by then. Wasn't that like a late 20, 2000s kind that, of situation? Well, the, that's uh, iPhone 4. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. The screen, the quote is, the screen is night and day for me compared to the 3G. Just as the 3GS a year ago is now a night and day, uh, the screen is killer uh, feature on that device. Mm-hmm. And talking about the window, the iPhone 4 and the retina display. Yes, absolutely. Um Anything what else? were you disappointed in at that time? Okay. Yeah, like what was what was dis- what was disappointing tech at that time? <laughs> There's a lot of there was some stuff up here about AT and T before. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there was some issues with Xbox. I saw um, iPhone four pre order chaos. The pre order process of <laughs> iPhone four it was a major frustration. AT and T servers couldn't handle the demand, leading to a widespread issues with orders being canceled or delayed. Rob described it as really um, quote really amazing how much they went that w- this went wrong with customers' information being handled poorly and orders being mysteriously canceled. I think it was several years before that became. They were disappointed, and the team was skeptical about the push towards motion-controlled gaming, particularly with Microsoft's Kinect. One member, I just bought a Kinect game, and now I can't find my Kinect. Uh, the other day, I found the Avengers game from the Xbox 360. Uh, one member expressed disappointment, saying, I'm against the whole movement in video games. I want to sit down and play a video game. That's exactly what I want to do. I feel like Chilla has said that over the years as well, uh, later in the show. Google Buzz and Wave. Do we remember Buzz and Wave? Buzz was like a weird <gasps> social media y thing, right? Or was mm-hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. Google yeah, Wave. You buzzed. Google Wave is kind of the precursor to what is Google Docs now, I think, where there's like the live editing kind of situation. Because it was like kind of a, a whiteboard of sorts that you could put a lot of information mm-hmm. in. I remember Gina Tripani being like, wrote a book on Google Wave and then it canceled like two months later. Um, anyway, anyways, Still lack of same. user-friendly design and delayed essential features led to frustration. The team criticized Google for focusing uh, too much on engineering at the expense of usability. <laughs> Not much has changed. With one member saying there is no easy way to live in Wave, and then Buzz is an, another example. Google Buzz, man, hold on, I gotta. I remember it was like a mild social media mm-hmm. situation, wasn't yeah. it? Google. Oh wow, why is this uh, Google? Wait, is it? No way, it's still live. No. no way. It's uh it was a social networking, microblogging, and messaging tool developed by Google. Okay. Um it's weird because DuckDuckGo gives me an address at the top <laughs> for it. But it, okay, then we go to the Wikipedia page. Okay, that, that makes more sense. Okay, um, so it was Google Wave which turned into Google Plus. Mm, okay, okay. 
and former location is google.com slash buzz with two z's two z's Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, we have more that we we're unhappy with. You know, for, for <laughs> me attempting to uh, make this a, a positive show about technology, I really failed at it <laughs> in the long run. Uh, let's see. Facebook privacy issues. Nothing new there. <laughs> what disregard for user concerns were disappointing. The team mentioned that even with updates, Facebook's privacy controls remained overly complicated for the average user. Katie, as somebody who teaches uh, Facebook to the elderly, <laughs> is that still true? Mm. 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 Nope, everything's fine. Yes. Steam versus games for Windows Live. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I think they said that Steam had poor user experience from games for Windows Live as is accurate. Um, they actually disabled it and, and uh, had a patch that disabled it on some games and I lost my Arkham Asylum save game. That's why I never finished it. <laughs> no. So, um, and of course, you know, it's uh, just, just Xbox everywhere, which is another one of those. Why didn't we do this the whole time guys? So, um, let's see. I had what we're excited. I've had, had it between that. Uh, I think, man, we really kind of dug in there. I feel like I've have a better sense of what we were talking about in 2010 than we've ever done this before. <laughs> So, so eventually my brainstorm, my, my brainchild is all of our podcasts go into a GPT like this. And we'd be like, you know, um, when, you know, when did, when did, uh, uh, Katie start using Plurk and, and when did, uh, when did, when did, when did Dave, um, uh, how many times did Dave shoot the moon with his phone? Uh, and when did I get over my 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 dislike of vertical video? <laughs> so there could be some real trends that happen in there. Um, so again, that's the chat GPT thing. I didn't put a publicly. I guess I could put a publicly available. Honestly, actually, I would like to put a public available um, as a tool for that. So, did, Katie, did you say this doesn't load for you necessarily? I think you do have to have. No. I think you do have to be on the tier, like the first tier for it pay tier for it to get into gpts like this so uh sorry uh but um Rude. but those who are you know and of course there's a lot of things going on uh dave you did something with um with a g a um another ai recently yeah actually that was google's ai yes yeah, google's ai you google's made this AI. image here so google has uh, removed from its lab mm -hmm. the image generation Mm -hmm. uh, similar to what you can do in other ones, uh, except that it actually spelled awesome cast correct. Yes. Uh, I did not ask it to do a person. Mm -hmm. So I did, was not able to count fingers, but seeing what other people have posted, um, these people are much more people like, you know, you get a much more realistic look, which is, uh, good in a way because it's showing you the technology gets better, but also scary because the easiest way to tell if, oh, here's an image of so, so and so and celebrity, and then you look at their hands and then they have six fingers, or there's like a half of a finger, then another half of a finger in a weird right, direction. Right. And it's the because way what's to the tell. rule when you're trying to determine AI? You check the fingers. Yeah. Check the fingers. You check the little details, which mm. AI can't do, but apparently Google can now do this and this mm. is public open this is not paid also also so i know katie i think you had count the tails from, <laughs> yeah. that, from that michael's art piece count. a few weeks ago the tails and the legs the tails and the <laughs> legs absolutely so um no the, it looks really cool i mean it looks very ai art, artsy, artsy yeah. of course but the fact that it's getting the text tells me like oh no you know this is the part where i started considering oh no should i start doing x over here not x but that's a whole different site apparently mm, i hate the branding uh but <laughs> um yeah i i think is this um is this a trial is it paid is it public like where, where is public. this at it is public okay uh it's free Okay. It's still part of the labs part. Okay. So yeah. it's still experimental. Sure. But anyone can Listen, use it. When it, come, when it comes out, it's going to be experimental. Let's, yeah. Let's be honest. Well, you, you still have to, and you still have to log in. So mm -hmm. you have to log into your Google account. It's so, be, but it's still public. It's going to be, I keep getting the, they, they're, they're really pushing it on the workspaces applications. Um, and Katie, I, do you have, you have some workspaces accounts too, right? Are you, are, if yeah. I'm not mistaken, like, are you getting those those notifications at the top of the screen, um, trying to get you to try it out for at no cost? Mm -hmm. They're saying now. Surprise! No, no, you pay. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm interested in the idea of it being integrated and therefore, but I, I'm not, ex, I'm not excited for paying like 30 bucks per user per month on top of what I'm paying for workspaces right now. Um, that's just not, it's, and it just it doesn't feel like it's, it's something that's ready for prime time. Uh, eventually I would love to have AI, AI integration is, I think is the killer app on most cases, which means you're going to have an account with Google. You're going to have an account with Apple to do this or Apple will build it, build it in or whatever, or, you know, Microsoft's going to have their stuff. So, um, you know, I think that's going to be the question with that. Oh, so. and I did just put into the doc, mm -hmm. the link for the Google AI image and it's ai test kitchen dot with google dot com slash and it's like tools slash image ai okay i'm showing cluttered artist studio light shining through window welcoming <laughs> okay well we'll play with that a little bit so this and so this is basically a lab thing so it could be you know maybe not use it for work kind of thing i mean well also it's sketchy using it for work but maybe for your podcast yeah. uh, that doesn't you know that has a, a, a handful of patreon supporters no big deal there because <laughs> you're definitely not affording an artist at that point no so and that's what it is and that and again i qualify that for anybody it's like well you could have hired somebody to do this it's like yo i'm not hiring you um because i don't have the money to um and and then and and one of the artists that i was working with uh on something else on another project that you know they were they were just the person that was being used and i interfaced with just got hired by aew so <laughs> it's just like i'm definitely not using you because you you're busy right now <laughs> so um so hey uh congr hey, not that he'd be listening to the they'd be listening to the show but uh congratulations to jcp for uh getting yeah it is it became the uh uh, dedicated uh, merchandise designer, art designer for AEW was announced today. So that's uh, good to see people in the glow up like that. So no. and people who have a lot of talent mm -hmm. and JCP and, does. Yeah, if you look, um, if you look at their designs, they are amazing, um, and they put the stuff to shame. That's uh, uh Katie. Remember the She Rex stickers? Yeah, that's who they were from. Aww. It was the Shira as a T Rex, I think, wasn't it? And then there was like a Mario boxing one I got for Chachi. There's these. Um, I'm afraid to unplug this stuff. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a there's some great like like uh, I got a Jake's Snake Robber sticker on the back of my laptop. Uh, you know, and and you know did a lot of the posters for the 880 wrestling we were doing for several months. Um, so I don't know who does them now, but um, they they. <laughs> They have a good habit of finding artists that end up doing, doing really good. <laughs> so it's that's a good that's a good thing if you see a poster that like you know, yeah this poster artist is not going to be with us for long is is kind of a good thing. Same with wrestlers too I suppose. But um but yeah no very cool. So image fx uh that's a uh, um ai ai test kitchen dot with google dot com slash oh god this is oh my god. <laughs> uh, and I apologize. Okay, I really can't the, they make an easy link. All the links have not been getting in there because my own personal AI experiment. I've been trying to use uh, uh, AI to do the show notes, and I'm trying to take it, make it do take the the links out of the sheet and put it in. And I went to look at for something from last week and realized it wasn't in there. So I'm going to try to not do this at three in the morning <laughs> when I vet these things, <laughs> for instance. That's definitely a user error, uh, making sure they're not getting done right. Um, but anyways, um, Katie, do you have any other uh, items uh, on your mind? I don't see any in the doc before I go to this uh, this, this, this uh, tip at the bottom. <laughs> I saw you calling me out with no uh, losing the Amazon or the uh, Facebook face filters. <laughs> it just felt like something you use. Um, you're usually the one I that's feel like always. We did that. What's that? Yeah, we we were especially during the pandemic when we yes. were playing games and stuff. You're usually the one that brings me these uh, these cool new app features, especially with Snapchat and things like that, right? So no, the, the, you're the one that I thought of when it, it came up. So and I wanted to get some <laughs> comments from you. Uh, so apparently, uh, the the story is that uh, Facebook or Meta, excuse me. Um, has, yeah. has announced that uh, uh, they are going to be removing the AR filters uh, in January 2025, along with some tools for making them uh, as Meta plans to shut down Spark Studio. Um, I do. Are you pouring one out here, Katie? No, I'm questioning a lot of things right now um, of why, and mm. I'm a I'm thinking that it has something else that they probably have on tap at this point. Mm. So you think like a next generation of the AI or the um, AR kind of stuff, right? I'm betting. Okay. Uh, I'm, 
<laughs> Put that down as my prediction in August <laughs> for next year. August 2024. There you go. Oh, and then we'll, we'll go back into chat GPT and be like, didn't daughters predict <laughs> Something. Well, listen, when I put everything in the chat GPT, we're going to say, hey, did we ever predict this was going to happen? <laughs> That's one did of the Did any of things. our prediction come true? Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it won't be me. But like, okay, what did we do last year? Okay, how did we say that? What did we mean by that? It's going to be literally, I'm just going to ask you, did, uh, was, was Chilla right about that thing, about the thing? You know, <laughs> was KD right about the AI, da, 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 da? You know, not more than, you know, we'll let it determine it before we, we, we move on. So awesome. So this is, and, and Katie, please chime in on this because I have some opinions. My awesome tip of the week is more of a question. Is, God, no, I hate, I hurt every time I say it this way. Is X premium worth it for you? Uh, I'm <laughs> are, are we creating um, sexy images? Oh, <laughs> yes, there's that. So if you're on Patreon, and I'll leave that part to your imagination, uh, we were playing with, um, so so I, I've had a week, about a, it was last Tuesday, because it was brand new. Oh, oh, Dave just found the microphone. Um, this is what happens when you get a person. He just knocks. He's getting, oh, this is the, the I'm go. getting too comfortable situation. So... But anyway, so I, uh, uh, Missy picked up uh, for IndieWrestling.us. She, she was doing some work and needed stats. And one of the things they took away so they could charge you for it, which <laughs> I love this, um, is, uh, is you know, the, the analytics, you don't see any, almost any of them anymore. You know, standard, hey, look, you've had this many impressions at the bottom between, that's it, right? And it goes to nothing. It goes to a page that doesn't even really kind of direct you to anything. Um, which, you know, gave me pause for giving them money to get features back. But this is something that we are trying to grow and, and everything. And Twitter is still, um, unfortunately, um, you know, a place where that is happening in this in that vector uh, with professional wrestling. We need we needed the information. So she's she paid the eight bucks a month or whatever. I'm like, well, if you're there, OK, cool. We'll start streaming stuff. And we had a really good we actually we, we had a really good experience streaming to uh, the show Friday night to to uh, to Twitter. Um, you know, I had, had a good bit of views in there. I loved it, it was us and Ryback. You know, that's a that's a joke for wrestling fans. Um, but, you know. Uh, and and you do get you do get the analytics you do get, you get some of the 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 scheduling like more robust scheduling you get you know you get all that kind of stuff and you do get the media studio um and you're able to use that um the other thing that we played with and i don't think anybody needs this in this day and age is grok ai um katie how would you describe our experience with grok ai last week when we we're using the image generation so we we were discussing how it doesn't have rails like essentially like everything else we've been playing with has parameters that it will not let you go mm -hmm. crazy wild and do certain things and we were testing that because we wanted to know if we could really do some things and we had some sexy versions of um movie and tv characters <laughs> yes yes because we just started tossing it out to see it and um i think one of the most interesting things and um a it was the fact of, um, yes, you could do more, but there was an obvious slant mm -hmm. in the sexiness mm -hmm. where one body was preferred over another body when you increase the sexiness, which I thought was pretty interesting. I'm just throwing that out there because I thought that was like, oh, okay, here we are. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we, we, had a, we had a good time. <laughs> yeah that was too good of a time uh with it but so so it, yeah it is like you know it copyrights are another issue like uh, you know mm -hmm. there's like yeah. people making mickey mouse with a, a maga hat with a cigarette in his mouth you know stuff like that you know it like like very very obvious like the you know, we were using mini mouse in in certain things it did not it mm -hmm. did not sexify mini mouse i want to point out there uh, so <laughs> i think i think i think like the like the, the pulling a shrink on this uh on this ai might be might be worthwhile to look at uh to see what doesn't does ha doesn't happen uh for instance i said show me show me show me a sexy girl i got a picture of exactly what you expect i showed show, show me a sh sexy man and i got a black screen you know what i mean like like this is the kind of stuff that's happening in here no i don't think this is something that you should be using for you know the ways that we would use a mid journey or our chat gp ai it's interesting like but it, it, it's kind of a give me you know when when you're paying for these other things that is not a reason to pay for it now if you are somebody that um twitter 
so if uh, hey i'm new to this project you know this is a this is a conversation we have with wrestlers all the time man i don't know if i should learn you know should i get on twitter and this and this and this and this i was like listen where are you seeing the reaction where are you seeing the interaction it's like for for most cases it's instagram for for professional wrestlers because it's a very visual medium right and you know um uh, katie we've talked about this how we open up our instagram feed and there's a uh a man or woman in a gym selfie or otherwise uh you know very provocatively posed you know which is just like oh yeah that's just my friend i follow wrestlers <laughs> you know <laughs> you know that kind of thing so uh, you know that does very well there uh between that and just general visualness of a professional wrestler and wrestlers um i think if you're somebody who you're, you know your audience is on twitter uh yeah. you know and you do needs that you know i think the stats are the biggest thing i don't know that streaming is necessary if you're like i want to be on every platform bar none uh my issue is you know i don't think it's worth awesome cast paying what it is to be streaming on there like like literally the only thing we would be using it for for eight dollars a month is to stream this show there and we're already streaming on five other platforms you know um so so i don't see the benefit quite in that maybe a little bit of exposure the nice thing is if you are streaming on twitter you know why you're doing really good because not a lot of people are streaming on twitter right now you remember when like meerkat and periscope came out and everybody <laughs> had amazing numbers because you were the first ones there mm -hmm. twitter has reinvented the first movers advantage <laughs> By taking it away from everybody and making you pay for the bare minimum function of it. Um, we can talk about uh, uh, the ethics of this all day long on another podcast. But, you know, that is the fact of where we're at. And if you want it, you have to pay for it. Is it worth it for you to pay for it? It's not worth me to pay $8 a month across three, four different accounts to do so. Um, but if I'm in a position where I need the stats to be able to make that worthwhile. Um, and... and and this is one that keeps popping up too. It's like you can make money from Twitter, but you have to pay us first. Yes, and then you have to do like a million subs. Like the qualifications are, you need a like something like a million followers in order to even think about making a penny off of them. Uh, so so there's that. I have not looked at it as much as see if we get a boost from being on there. Supposedly more people see you in your replies um, if you pay for this. Um, another kind of icky kind of thing that, um, you know, we know Facebook does this as well. Uh, they're just not as upfront with it, I think, <laughs> with, you know, with that idea. Um, so, so do not fret over it if you don't think that it's a feature that you need. If the audience is there and having things like statistics and a little bit more control and live streaming are something that does feel like a benefit to you then I think it's worth $8 a month. That's a small price to pay for it. Um, and again, just because I have multiple accounts, I'd love to have all these features on my personal account, but that's not going to make me money. That's not going to do business for me to be able to do that on my personal account, uh, which is where I'm the most prolific on, right? Um, because that's the one that opens up and the one that I'm talking with people on half the time. Uh, so, and sharing this content and everything like that. So it, that's, that's kind of my kind of view of it. Katie, you know, again, dealing with your social media clients, we, you know, it, it is, uh, are you kind of on the same page with that? Do you have any other ideas about what this does and doesn't work for as far as clients go? Yeah. Cause it's especially like you had mentioned, um, if, if your audience is here, if you are trying to, um, especially if you're trying to show your, you know, your clients, it, like your, your customers, like beyond it yeah. go, you know, they oh, we're on Twitter. Everybody's talking about Twitter. Where are we on Twitter? Here you go. Like that's maybe do it. But, um, like for us and a lot of our clients was we use social pilot and that pulls reports across all the social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Does it deep dive like Twitter analytics, um, that you're paying for? Probably not. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, that's where it would come in handy. Cause you're probably going to really figure out like how far your stuff is going versus like just basic numbers. Yeah. It, it's kind of sad that you have to pay for transparency. <laughs> to a certain yeah. extent. You know what, you know what, uh, you know, I can't, I can't speak too much to that because, um, yeah, I, I think about my podcast host because, um, there is a, you pay more to get better stats on your podcasting. So it's not a new concept. It, again, everything is colored by the idea of, you know, we it, this this site has been owned by and and presented in a certain way for a, like a, over a decade. And, and the sudden change is, I think, a whiplash for some of us that um, and we've talked about like we have a um, 
uh, the, the, an emotional attachment, <laughs> if you will, to this platform because that's where a lot of us found each other. Um, I mean, it's like it's like your favorite bar closing because that's where everybody hung out, you know, kind of thing. Or your <laughs> your 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 new bar got bought by a TGI Fridays, and now that's what it is. That's probably actually pretty accurate, right? <laughs> you really like, well, it's where we hung out, and the memories are here, but it kind of looks and smells different and not better, and it's more expensive, right? <laughs> Did this place used to be a pizza hut? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Katie, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we, we, well, at least we, we can always, we'll always have plurk. Yeah. <laughs> always have plurk. I know. I need to add that to my website. <laughs> you, you, sh- oh my God. you should just, just put at the bottom, smaller text, you know, right? Plurk. Find me on plurk. <laughs> plurk with me. <laughs> Gay Dutters, Dutters PGH, and or Kate Marie PGH across social medias. <laughs> or just, uh, just go to your website, Kate, Katie, Katie Yep. Well, and then you can see me on TV. On there the you page. go. <laughs> on the TV. And on TV near I'm, you. Uh, I'm very tall, especially when you put me next to other anchors. What was the comment Reporting. about that, that? That Hold on. Let me pull it up. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's that, what's <laughs> Let's that say, comment? Dutters, you're, you're, pretty, you're, you're tall when you put yourself next to most humans. Mm. Yeah. Except when you and Sorg are next to each other. In that case, you can't tell because you're... Last week, we did a show with uh, how how tall is Pretty Boy Smooth? Six foot ten? Nine. Maybe nine? Six foot nine? Six nine. So, so there's myself and Katie who are, uh, well, let's just say we're well clear six foot. Uh, uh, and and then poor this poor Bradley is like, I am the shortest of four people yes. in this room right now sitting on the couch. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Um, Partner, I gotta show. We'll, I'll show you the photo of uh, me and uh, I'm holding PB's belt and standing next to him. And I think the phrase was, "I look like a Make a Wish child." <laughs> yes, because I was so excited <laughs> with yes. a wrestler's belt and, and like short. <laughs> <laughs> this is the picture. This is the the, the thumbnail from uh, from your uh, appearance <laughs> on KDKA. And it was it. Uh, it was like it's like they're seeing their children off the school. <laughs> yeah, I was the child going back Especially to school. Especially John with his hands in his pockets and the shirt open <laughs> like that. <laughs> Thanks, mom and dad. Thanks, mom. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Dave Ponner, iPhoneography podcast, and now we know all your stats. Yeah, all the stats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. At Sorgatron on all the social media. I am going to Washington, D.C. on Friday. Uh, going to be hanging out doing, uh, <laughs> yeah, hanging. I'm working, but uh, for the um, New Japan Wrestling Show at, uh, was it D.C. Arena or something? I don't, I don't know. We have a parking pass from, I've never been there before. This is my first time. Missy's been there twice. Uh, so we're going to do some work with them on production, having some fun with that. If you want to check out, again, this is wrestling, but if you want to see, uh, we had a very big day in, produ- in video production doing uh, NWA Exodus Pro's uh, first live stream show, first show actually seen outside of people that are there. Um, and we've been working with them, uh, at least collecting the footage here uh, for uh, almost a year. Um, you can see that over, we were on NW, the National Wrestling Alliance um, YouTube page. Uh, NWA Wrestling's YouTube. I think it's up to like 16, 17,000 uh, views right now. We had amazing numbers. It was a great show. Um, we, we almost, I want to say almost flawless, but no shows flawless, even the big ones I've been watching over the weekend. Uh, so, uh, really, really excited about that. If you want to see uh, what we can do when we have our team and get everything comes together and clicks, and we have some really, 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 really great wrestlers. Uh, in there, like including the NWA champ EC3, who you might have seen on television uh, <laughs> currently or in the past. Um, so, no, it was a lot of fun and a great team that we're working with. I can't say enough about that. And I probably will say more about it on the Wrestling Mayhem show uh, this evening. So, if you want to tune in there for that, thank you, everybody. Thank you for uh, supporting us and watching or listening for 700 episodes. Uh, wait, 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 Dave, you got to go get the cookie cake. Oh, okay, gonna, we got to okay, show okay, them at okay. least on the show. I got a picture at least. Uh, but we do have a celebratory cookie cake and we're going really, really late. So I don't know if we're going to do a Patreon at this point. Uh, so he's, he's, he's moseying for the cookie cake (laughs) and it's incoming. So we have to at least get that visual. Maybe that'll be the cover art. I don't know. Uh, there you go. There you go. There is the cookie cake. Happy 700th episode. Thank you so much for that. And my waistline. Thanks you too. Uh, (laughs) thank you guys so much. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This 
show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. I'm Eamon. I'm Merlin. And we're a gay. And his NB. Are you a reality television connoisseur? Do you like to discuss from an LGBTQ lens? If so, a gay and his NB is the podcast for you. Hear us break down all your favorite guilty pleasure reality shows from Bravo, Drag Race, and just about everything in between. Listen to a gay and his NB on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.